Welcome to eDina.com. The dust of election might have settled and Modi 3.0 is all set to supersede like before. The political analysts are still trying to understand the results of this historic election. Many of the states have thrown away results that were incomprehensible for even the most seasoned election analyst. One of those states was Karnataka. Better late than never. We give you a comprehensive analysis of Karnataka verdict and joining us today is political activist and co-founder of edina.com, Dr. Vasu H.V. Welcome, Vasu. Thank you, Swati. Uh, so many of the survey agencies have done pre-poll survey, exit poll, post-poll survey and edina also did uh, pre-poll and post-poll surveys and it was quite close to the final election verdict. How do you see the election now? Yeah, we were uh, uh, very close since uh, many of the uh, pre-poll and even exit polls, uh, they said that Congress will get anywhere between 1 to 3 or 0 to 3, while we said it is more than 13, but it was 9, so we were also not that uh, accurate in that sense. And um, basically in our second survey, that was our final survey before the first phase of election, there we said that Congress uh, will definitely get 9 seats and BJP and JDS will get 7 seats. But there are 12 seats in which uh, the contest is very close and even 1 to 2 percent uh, vote share shifting on either side. There can be landslide either on this side or that side. But at that time we felt that uh, since uh, more and more women are voting in favour of Congress, it will also pull in some more men's vote also and because of guarantees, Congress will sweep this election. Uh, that does not happen. Uh, and whatever our final prediction of the Congress getting nine seats, definitely only that came true and the landslide shifted to other side. So that is uh, not because guarantees did not work, but there is a this has become a caste election. Not that uh, guarantees or other class issues did not work, but uh, there is a different kind of caste consolidation that has happened in this election. So that was quite evident post election. So, when you talk about it became a caste election, it is being said it is the two dominant land owning caste which consolidated against the Ahinda combination or coalition. So, is that true? No, that is not entirely true. As you rightly said, uh, Lingayats and Okaligas are the main land owning dominant caste in Karnataka. Okaligas are mainly concentrated in the southern part of Karnataka. And Lingayats are scattered all over Karnataka, but more concentrated, relatively more concentrated in northern Karnataka. But uh, consolidation of Okaligas and Lingayats alone cannot uh, give you a big win like what has happened now, number one. Yes. Number two, the consolidation of Lingayats and Okaligas is not new. If you take, for example, the previous assembly election, 2023 assembly election, even then, the votes that were actually, uh, that went to both JDS and, Cong and BJP were the same. But this time, the coalition did work. For example, in southern Karnataka, take for example, Tumku district, uh, where there is sizable population of both Lingayats and Okaligas. Okay. So there are many such uh, constituencies and some part of Okaliga votes did go to BJP even in 2023 assembly elections. Now that alliance worked quite well and uh, the vote transfer between JDS and BJP was easy because both the parties are in anti-Congress space in Karnataka, so that was a natural alliance. But did the votes over and above what both these parties got in 2023 election of these two communities, Lingayats and Okaligas, went to the alliance? No. According to us, that has not happened. It is that the alliance has worked quite well and there is a considerable shift of non-Kuruba OBCs. Kuruba is uh, the dominant OBC caste and uh, Mr. Sidramaya, our chief minister, belongs to that caste and because of his own charisma and uh, the command over the caste that he belongs to, that community has voted more in favour of Congress. But non-Kuruba OBCs, they have moved towards BJP and JDS. So that is clear. It is true that Lingayats and Vakaligas have voted more for NDA, but it is not beyond what they have voted in the assembly election. Okay. Uh, you also say that guarantees have worked. Uh, this is contrary to many people who are also talking that guarantees have not worked, otherwise Congress would have sweeped the election because they were expecting that Congress is in power in the state, so that would have helped Congress in the Lok Sabha election. How do you counter that argument? 
Well, uh, in 2023 assembly election, Congress uh, got 42.9 percent vote share. But in this parliament election, it has got more than 45 percent. Okay. So, generally, Karnataka is preferring BJP over other political parties when it comes to Lok Sabha election. Even when Congress has won the Vidhan Sabha election in a big way, like it did in 2013, or uh, yeah, 2013, even then the, uh, the BJP got uh, more than 16 or 17 seats in 2014. So, BJP is like a preferred national party uh, for Karnataka people. When that is the case, Congress should have got less number of votes in this election, especially when JDS and BJP are fighting together. But that has not happened. In fact, Congress has got 2.36% uh, more votes than what it got in assembly election, which generally happens in a slight fight election also, uh, when there are no three parties, but there are two alliances. That time also it happens, but uh, we see that more women have voted in favor of Congress. That is quite visible in all the surveys and even in our survey also in all the surveys and uh, whatever CSDS has uh, put out now, you can see that also. But uh, non-Kurba OBC, which are called uh, EBC in some other states, uh, they have voted uh, more in favor of India Alliance in other parts of the uh, country. Like CSDS has put it out already, that in UP particularly and Bihar to an extent, uh, they have voted uh, for India. So, you also know that Akhilesh Yadav gave only 5 uh, tickets to Yadavs in UP, but the rest of the OBC tickets were given to non-Yadav OBCs. So, and uh, the vote shift has also happened like that. But in Karnataka, I think the number that uh, has been put out by CSGS is more than 20 percent, uh, something of the chart of uh, the non-Kurba OBCs. So, this is something that the Congress should uh, know now, that uh, it is, when you say Ahinda, Ahinda in Karnataka is something like Bahujan where you have minorities, the backwards and Dalits. Uh, they are quite big in number in Karnataka, but at the same time, Ahinda is not totally united. Particularly, non kurba OBCs are not so much with Congress. That is quite visible. Otherwise, for example, take in uh, Mandia and Bangalore rural, where uh, uh, H.D. Kumar Swami from JDS and H.D. Kumar Swami's brother-in-law, who contested from BJP ticket from Bangalore rural, they won from very big margin. Even if you consider that all the Okaliga votes have gone to them, you cannot explain the kind of margin that they have won this election. So, it is, uh, it is like, uh, it is not just due to Okaliga or Lingayat consolidation number one. And secondly, it is uh, not that uh, Okaligas and Lingayats have consolidated more than what they had in assembly election. So, it is the non-Kurba OBC or the EBC that you say, were the deciding uh, factor in this election, can we say that? Yes, and of course, Okaligas uh, have consolidated in the same proportion, but then the vote shift has happened to BJP candidate also. This was quite visible in our second survey, okay. where we saw, we had not put out uh, the community figures, but we were sure that uh, Okaligas were more undecided and non-Kurba OBCs were more undecided. And those undecided votes have, uh, we e expected that the non-Kurba OBCs to an extent will come to India okay. or Congress, that has not happened. Women were also more undecided, though it has come, gone more to uh, Congress, probably it is also not to that great extent when they have voted in, on caste lines. So, this is how uh, there was some difference uh, uh, when you take whatever we have projected and uh, what were the final results. So, in understanding Karnataka results, even though it is not so much of a loss situation for Congress, it is still better than 2019 elections, uh, but it, still, it has still opened the doors for uh, BJP in southern India. It has uh, won one seat in Kerala and uh, it has opened some avenues in Tamil Nadu also. So, how do you see this uh, BJP's further entry into South India? Yes, definitely no. BJP is a pan-India party. It has presence in almost every parliament uh, segment uh, uh, in South India also. Um, and of course, in Andhra, they have uh, had alliance with TDP. So, they may, might not have contested uh, in all the parliamentary seats. But in Tamil Nadu, now they are there in every 
parliamentary segment, but because uh, they did not have an alliance with Anna DMK and their vote share has gone up. In Tel Telangana, their vote share has gone up. In Karnataka, if you compare it uh, with 2019 election, their vote share has come down. But that is because 2019 was an extraordinary uh, situation. That was a different election altogether. Uh, BJP has made its inroads uh, into South India. And it is like uh, BJP is mostly a North Indian party, co-built party. It does not hold water now. And um, even in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. So when Tamil Nadu and Kerala, this is the situation you can imagine. Uh, in Karnataka, where they have ruled twice, though they did not get majority both the times, but uh, the Karnataka, they have significant presence since 1991. In fact, in 1991 itself, BJP suddenly, uh, its vote share increased in parliament and it also got some seats. Okay. Prajwal Revanna issue was quite uh, hot in the election time and uh, do you think that sex scandal affected his defeat as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, though it has not affected uh, all the seats and all the JDS seats also, because except him, all the JDS uh, candidates won. Yes. And uh, Kumar Swami in the neighboring constituency won with a big margin. So, not that it has affected uh, all the constituencies, but it has definitely affected Hassan. Um, even in our surveys also, we saw that uh, the perception is against uh, Prajwal Revanna. It was much before this incident. Uh, but uh, the voters were still in confusion and he had a lead. But once uh, the pen drives uh, came out and it became a big issue, uh, he lost but he did not lose by a very big margin. Um, yeah, it has affected only that seat. That is what we see now. Uh, so overall, what picture comes is that from the predictions and the final result is that uh, lot of the voters were undecided up until the election day and it is these undecided voters that seem to have affected the final verdict and the EBC and non kurba OBC as you mentioned. So uh, what do you think these election results will it impact Karnataka politics and the next assembly election in Karnataka? Yeah, when we say that um, uh, a major chunk of uh, OBCs in Karnataka uh, or not totally with uh, Congress, then it's a worrying thing for uh, Congress because uh, they are 22 percent in Karnataka's population. Karnataka OBC is roughly 32 percent and uh, Kurba's from 9 to 10 percent. So this big chunk, if it is not there with Congress and uh, along with the other dominant caste, Lingayat and Okaligas, if uh, they side with BJP and JDS, then it is uh, really uh, not uh, good news for uh, Congress. And in all probability, uh, BJP and JDS uh, alliance is going to stay for some more time at least. And uh, when that happens, uh, along with the communal polarization that BJP is trying to play, and in some parts, say, uh, for example, in coastal area, Malnad and Mumbai Karnataka area, uh, this is uh, the western part of the North Karnataka, there. Uh, one of the uh, social base of BJP is this uh, OBC and uh, for almost 25 years they are winning some constituencies without any um, break uh, in uh, South Kendra, Udupi Chikmaglo, Shumaga, North Kendra, Dharwad and Belga. And you can see even in this election it is quite intact. And in some constituencies, they have won comfortably with big margin, even when they have um, replaced uh, the candidates who won from those constituencies several times. So this actually, if it extends to other parts of Karnataka, then Congress uh, will have to worry a lot. So that is what it looks like. And uh, Congress is in power uh, in assembly right now. And incumbent party will have lot of difficulty in Karnataka. It was in 1978 where uh, an incumbent party was re-elected in Karnataka last time. After that, no incumbent party in Karnataka, which has completed five years term, got re-elected even when the party gave good governance. So when there is no good governance, Karnataka electorate have pushed the ruling party to third place three times so far. So when that is the case, so it is BJP and JDS social base which is increasing and it is the communal polarization and Congress being an incumbent party, it is it will be quite a difficult election for Congress in 2028. So 
with this you can imagine how in south india bjp can come to power with its own majority when it came to power in 2008 and also in 2019 both the times bjp did not have majority it bought majority it bought mlas from other political parties with the infamous in operation kamala so with this scene right now if everything goes like this only for the next 4 uh, years congress will have a tough uh, situation in karnataka Uh, thank you, Dr. Vasu, for such an insightful thank discussion. You. And uh, hopefully, this discussion would have helped our viewers also in understanding Karnataka's verdict. For similar such discussions, like, share, and subscribe. Idina. dot com. Matashto vishesha video kala nu nodalu matto hosa video kala bagay thiriyalu. Idina. dot com YouTube channel subscribe maadi matto bell icon click maadi.